Great, thank you very much. Um, so, it's um, the problem we want to try and solve is that depression has got very many weak evidence-based treatments. And the problem is if you do respond, it often takes at least four to six weeks. So why can't you respond within a few days? That's the question we're trying to solve. And actually, there has been a treatment for that called total sleep deprivation that's been known about as a rapid treatment for depression since the 80s. But it fell into disuse because although you've got about 50% of people responding, um, you then they ra relapse very rapidly after that. So over the past 20 years, there's been a newer development, and that's called triple chronotherapy. But it's been very little uh, research around it. And what does it consist of? Um, and I'm afraid this is another translation problem from the Mac. <laughs> uh, what does it consist of? Well, it consists of that total sleep deprivation um, in which... Uh, in our particular study, they stay overnight at the Bethlehem Royal in the occupational therapy department where they're supported to stay awake. They go home, and on the next day, we then ask them to stay awake until 5 p.m. on that day uh, and sleep for eight hours. Now we're phase advancing their sleep. And then on the third day, they go to bed at 7 p.m. And on the fourth day at 9 p.m., so you bring it all the way around within four or five days. And you also combine that, and that's the triple, with the bright light therapy. It's the same type of lights that might be used in seasonal affective disorder, where you're asked to be in front of a light for 30 minutes in the morning, first thing in the morning for six months. And there has actually been four small RCTs and 12 case series all over the world in this particular triple chronotherapy with promising results of about the same sort of effect size that you'd get from uh, other antidepressant and CBT and so on, with about a 50% recovery. But nobody in the UK has been interested in looking at this before, and it's always been done so far in inpatients. So what's the mechanism? Well, probably it's some sort of like computer reset of the circadian rhythm, which we know is often abnormal in depression. So this is a small feasibility study in which the question was, can we recruit and treat uh, depressed out patients? Um, and uh, we've got our control group in which they're getting information on sleep hygiene, which is not really a placebo. I mean, it's actually more of a little active control because sleep, good sleep hygiene is, is also quite a good little treatment for depression. Um, and the placebo is more of the amber lighting, which is not meant to be helping in the morning. And our primary outcome is a, a blind assessment using the Hamilton, Hamilton uh, depression rating scale. And we will be following them up for six months. And you can see that actually so far we've got two weeks trial data, and it looks um, promising. That's uh, uh, week one, there's a good effect size between the two, but week two, the effect size is beginning to diminish as if the controls are beginning to, to catch up. But we're still talking about a 56% recovery um, in the treatment group compared to 16% in the control group. So for me, it looks very promising. Uh, but remember, this is just a, a feasibility study at this stage. So uh, we managed to recruit 58 patients within the 13 months, and that's mainly from IAP-type services. So they're not, treat, they're not sort of chronic refractory patients, and we excluded people who were more than two years. Both treatments were rated as equally credible and had the same expectancy for change, um, and the treatment was acceptable to patients. They were able to stick to the treatment. Um, which was good because this was not in patients, these were outpatients just being given instructions. The effect size was, was exploratory, and at one or two weeks it looks very promising. We now plan to apply for a larger study uh, looking at clinical cost effectiveness, and that's where we're going to need to recruit about 200 people. Um, we think that there's a lot of potential for other research, particularly in adolescents, where treatments for depression, as, as we know, are not very good, and particularly depressed in patients who are suicidal. Um, and uh, this, in terms of impact, we believe there could be an enormous impact in treating depression as a first step in, in the treatment of depression. We don't know it any predictors of response in previous studies that suggest that those people who have perhaps an evening chronotype, a diurnal variation to their mood, and high levels of observed activity. In other words, these are all things that you might expect in some sort of disruption to our circadian rhythm. But uh, these are all future questions to be answered. Thank you very much.